quick message to neurodiverse couples. Know that each party is describing their truth. It's okay to have more than one way of looking at things, okay? So don't try to correct their filter, in other words, how they interpret events, and don't spend any time whatsoever trying to convince the other person that your perspective is the only correct one. So a quick message to neurotypical spouses out there. You're likely to run into three important things with your autistic spouse. One, the need for sameness. Two, impaired prediction skills. Three, deficit with theory of mind skills. So let's look at each of these in turn. The need for sameness is one of the most uniform traits of ASD. Now, neurotypicals can routinely estimate the probabilities of certain events, for example, other people's likely behavior. But people on the autism spectrum don't have the same computational abilities, we'll call it, when it comes to prediction. Repetitive behaviors and insistence on rigid structure have been shown to soothe anxiety produced by unpredictability, even in people without autism. But people on the autism spectrum try very hard to impose structure on an environment that otherwise seems chaotic. Impaired prediction skills also helps to explain why people with ASD are often hypersensitive to sensory stimuli. Now, most neurotypicals are able to become used to ongoing sensory stimuli, for example, background noises, because they can predict that the noise or other stimulus will probably continue, but autistic individuals have much more trouble adjusting. If we were unable to adjust to stimuli, then the world would become overwhelming very quickly. It's like you can't escape the harshness that's falling on your ears or that you're observing. Also, people with ASD often have a reduced ability to understand another person's thoughts, feelings, and motivations, which is a skill known as theory of mind. This could result from an inability to predict another person's behavior based on past interactions. Individuals on the spectrum have difficulty using this type of context and tend to interpret behavior based only on what is happening in that very moment. When your autistic spouse is calm, his or her emotional age will match his or her chronological age. But when your autistic spouse is stressed, he or she will regress to preteen, sometimes older childhood. In other words, you may have a 38-year-old spouse who emotionally now is operating more like a 12-year-old. So there is regression in ASD when the person is anxious. Hey guys, this is Mark. Quick message to neurodiverse couples. The first step in solving your relationship problems is to agree on what the problem is. A lot of times the NT wife goes, oh, the problem is this. The ASD husband goes, no, that's the problem over here. So we must first agree on what the problem is before we can attempt to solve it. But having said that, if the two of you disagree on what the problem is, then simply make it a one two-pronged problem. A one two-pronged problem. In other words, I'll help you resolve your version of the problem if you'll help me resolve my version of the problem. Hey guys, this is Mark, and I want to impress upon all the neurotypical spouses out there that anxiety is an intrinsic feature of ASD level 1, or high-functioning autism. Your ASD spouse is particularly vulnerable to anxiety, and this vulnerability is due to a breakdown in circuitry related to extinguishing fear responses specific neurotransmitter system defects, and their inability to make accurate social judgments sometimes. Here are some other reasons for anxiety in your autistic spouse. He will have limitations in generalizing from one situation to another, and that often contributes in some, we'll call them social mistakes. Limitations in his ability to grasp social cues, along with his highly rigid style, act in concert to create repeated social errors. Your autistic spouse is going to experience the discomfort that comes from somatic responses or bodily sensations that are disconnected from events and experience. His difficulty with empathy is going to severely limit his autonomous social problem solving. That's a big problem in the marriage. The social challenges of people on the autism spectrum make it difficult for them to develop coping strategies for self-soothing and containing difficult emotions. There is a sufficient grasp of situations to recognize that others get it when they don't, and they are frequently on the receiving end of disapproval, in this case from the NT wife. So this is why people on the autism spectrum get more than their fair share of anxiety. We could also mention mind blindness, emotions blindness, some executive function deficits, sensory sensitivities, weak central coherence, problems with prediction. So the list is long and wide regarding why your ASD spouse is anxious. And what does that anxiety look like to you? Anger. Hey guys, this is Mark. Quick message to neurotypical spouses out there. If you have an autistic spouse, then you have a spouse who is an overthinker. In other words, sometimes he is overly logical. 
What does that look like? He overanalyzes things. In other words, he spends so much time combing over every little detail that he has a hard time initiating a task, sometimes procrastinating for weeks or months, sometimes never getting started on the task at all. Another characteristic of an overly logical brain is he's super critical of himself and you. He's going to be hard to please because he's very much a perfectionist. He's going to tend to be very pessimistic and skeptical of your ideas and your opinions and your view on things. And he's going to have a hard time seeing the big picture. In other words, he's going to hyper-focus on one little detail to the exclusion of others. Quick message to neurodiverse couples. No more blaming, shaming, or labeling. Blaming is, it's your fault. Shaming is, there's something wrong with you. And labeling is, you're a narcissist. You're a control freak. You're a bitch. You're a Hey guys, this is Mark, and I got a message to neurotypical wives out there. Do you identify with any of the following statements? I often feel empty. My emotions shift very quickly, and I often experience extreme sadness, anger, and anxiety. I'm constantly afraid that my ASD spouse will abandon me or leave me. I would describe most of my marriage as intense but very unstable. The way I feel about my autistic spouse can dramatically change from one moment to the next, and I don't always understand why. I have had suicidal thoughts, and when I'm feeling insecure in my marriage, I tend to lash out or make impulsive gestures to keep my ASD spouse close. Now guess what? If you identify with any or most of that, those self-statements there coincide with borderline personality disorder. So the message is this. Be careful accusing your autistic husband of having narcissistic personality disorder. Otherwise, he may be inclined to accuse you of having borderline personality disorder.